Okay. The hoodie is a bit unorthodox. And that's what we're doing today. Hey guys, it's Liz Stephanie here and I am back with a fifth version of this video. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed yet, please like and subscribe and without further ado, Let's get into Ugolino and his sons. Ugolino and his sons was sculpted between 1865 and 1867 by the French sculptor Jean-Baptiste Carpeau. This sculpture, Ugolino and his sons, is one of my very favorite works of art of all time. So in this video, we're going to talk about the style. We're also going to talk about Ugolino and his sons, basically who are the people in this sculpture. And we're going to talk about the sculpture itself. We're gonna get up close and personal. So who is Ugolino and his sons? Who are these characters? This big mass of uh, muscle and emotion. Ugolino, interestingly enough, is based on a real person. Uh, he was from Pisa and he was considered a Pisan trader. His alliances were flowy. And so him as well as his sons and grandsons were punished by being tossed into a tower. So they actually stayed there for eight months. There was some change in power and the man who came into power, who hated Ugolino, um, ordered that the key to their prison cell be tossed into the Arno River. And Ugolino and his sons basically were left to starve to death within this prison cell. And so this uh, sculpture is a representation of Ugolino, his sons and grandsons, final uh, days and moments of life. If we take a closer look here, we can see that his son is looking up at him. He is not looking back down at his son, but he has this really intense gaze looking away. Uh, we also see that his other grandson is uh, clenching himself around his waist and he is gnawing at his fingers. Well, what is it that his son is saying? Here is what we read. Father, our pain, they said will lessen if you eat us. You are the one who clothed us with this wretched flesh. We plead for you to be the one who strips it away. And Ugolino says, and I, already going blind, groped over my brood, calling to them, though I had watched them die for two long days. And then the hunger had more power than even sorrow over me. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the style of this sculpture. The style is in the romantic style. Two things that I want you to remember about the romantic style, it's about feeling and it's about the human body. So let's take a look at feeling. What they wanted to do was really convey the broad range and depth of human emotion. So whether that was ecstasy, madness, terror. So to convey that emotion, there were different techniques that were used. One is the expressions on the faces. Um, let's take a look at the expression. We can see uh, Ugolino here, his face is in turmoil. This is new. This is highly expressive. This is highly emotive. And this is what the romantic style was about. Uh, we also see that in the face of his son, this very emotional face. The romantic style was a departure from the classical style. And while there were lots of similarities, the classical style was a lot more balanced, proportional, and serene, and controlled and the romantics wanted to get away from that control and so now we're able to get these contortions. The romantic style also aimed to be very expressive in the positions of the body and the movements of the body. We can feel the raw emotion of the moment not just in the face but in the tension in their bodies. We can see the tension in the feet and the tension in the hands as well as in the tension of the muscles in the back and the abdomen. And we can see that the emotion is being brought to every portion of this sculpture. 
it was a difficult task because not only did you have to know how to express emotion through the body, but the romantics as well as the classicists were interested in the realism, um, the accuracy of the depiction of the human form. And so we see that every muscle is accurate here. The level of detail that Carpo put into this uh, sculpture blew everyone away. Um, actually, he took five years in doing research as well as in sculpting. Carpo actually hired male models out of pocket, move them into his home so that he could have more time to spend in studying uh, human anatomy. We've got muscles and bone and tendon, ligaments, we have veins. Look at the delicate smoothness of the veins and the real peaks and valleys of the tendons uh, in the feet. It's a beautiful landscape of the human body. So this statue is a great opportunity for a romantic sculptor to show how much of a master he was at the romantic style. Ugolino and his sons launched Carpo's career. As you can imagine, it's freaking gorgeous. I'd love to know what you guys think about this statue and tell me what your favorite part is. Is it the expressions on the faces? Is it the musculature of the bodies? Is it play of light and shadow? Tell me what it is that you love about this. Maybe it's the story itself. Maybe it's everything taken together. Just let me know. I would love to hear from you guys and really make this a discussion. I will see you guys next time. Please let me know if you like videos like this so I can and keep on making them for you. They always do something really cute, you know, in their videos. They're like, okay, see, that was my attempt at something cute. Well, please like and subscribe. And if you have friends who are into this sort of thing, please let them know to check me out. Send the link, share me with the world, people. Bye.